What's up everybody, Yoko from Yoko Gaming here. And if you read the thumbnail and clicked the video, then that's right. You're probably like me and wondering, what are you doing wrong? And right now there's a current trend where everyone is building the commando foregrip instead of other grips on these weapons. I picked the growl just as an example because I think everyone kind of has an idea of how the growl handles and what it looks like. And everyone pretty much uses the same attachments on it. But this one is intriguing and I wanted to go over what exactly the commando foregrip does versus something like the ranger foregrip for example and how it actually affects the gun and the recoil. So let's jump into it. All right, so if you're someone like me, you probably just rely on this little statistic chart that they has with the guns. Maybe you have a little idea of what the attachments do and how they work for you just based on playing on them. But not a lot of people go in depth and completely show you exactly what they are, or they do, they only do a one-time video, and so you kind of forget. The Commando Foregrip, basically what it says it does is that it helps maintain control of the fire. Now, it does recoil stabilization. What that means is it doesn't reduce the amount of recoil. What it does do is reduce the side-to-side -side spray of the recoil. So the Growl has a up and to the right. And so with this one, and this is the only attachment that we have, we'll see what it does. As you can see, it's pretty much a single bullet line. There's not too much bounce in the recoil of the gun itself. And like I said, it's straight up and to the right. Now we're gonna see what this looks like with the Ranger foregrip and compare and so we can see the difference. All right, we have a Ranger foregrip. We're gonna stand at the exact same spot, aim at the exact same bead of line that we aimed with with our commando. And we'll see if we can see a difference in the recoil pattern. Right away, you can tell it actually looks like it has a lot more side to side. It go on side to side, side to side, side to side, and it's not necessarily as tight of a line as it is with the foregrip. So why are people using the foregrip, especially on the guns like the Growl? Well, that takes us to our next point, which is that most everyone uses the Archangel barrel for this gun. Now, not just because they iron side along, but because it gives you damage range, bullet velocity, and recoil control. So if you're getting your recoil control in the front with the barrel, it only makes sense to capitalize on it with the commando foregrip so that you can have a straight, less reduced recoil line. And we're gonna see what that looks like right now. Okay, so now we have our commando foregrip and we have our barrel. So let's see if we can see a difference between the two. Remember, this was our commando and this was our ranger foregrip. So we're gonna aim about the same line as the others. Try to wait for it to come in. It is definitely much tighter, definitely much tighter, and it's a little bit more controlled. You can see there's not many spaces between any of the bullets themselves. This is a good sign. All right, now let's see what it looks like with the Ranger foregrip. Okay, so now we're completely recoil controlled out. We have our Ranger foregrip and we have the Archangel barrel. We're gonna aim one last time and see what it looks like. It looks like the recoil itself is a lot tighter, but you're still getting that side to side sway just a little bit, but it does reduce the amount of recoil. So me personally, I would say go with the commando foregrip. It looks like this is definitely paying off. So now we know what does what, and we can start piecing things together. The best thing about this Call of Duty is that you are in total control of the attachments on your guns. So now I'm gonna give you three different gun loadouts that I use, and uh, I'm gonna let you try them out for yourself. So the first one I'm gonna use is the one that's pretty common. It's a monolithic suppressor, Tempest Arc Angel Barrel, the Commando Foregrip, the 50 round mag, and the XRK, just to get that little bit of sprint fire because you are using some heavier attachments. Now this gun does handle pretty well if we go and take a look at it. And it's silent. So that's a big, big plus about this class. As you can see, it's not having too much sway just a little bit here and there between about the 20 to 40 uh, in the clip. And I only use the 50 on this instead of the 60. I don't know, I'm just weird. But this is one of my favorite classes and this is the one I probably rock the most. Okay, so the second class that we have is Frankenstein's Monster. Now what this one is that it takes recoil completely out of the game with using everything that you can to minimize and stabilize the recoil. So if we have a look at it, oh, that's the wrong one. What we have is the Muscle Break, we have the Tempest Archangel, the Commando Foregrip, the 50 Round Mag, and the F-Tac Rubber that helps with recoil control. 
So we're gonna see what this looks like. Now the disadvantage with this is that it is not silent, but if you're in war zone, sometimes you're really aggressive. It really doesn't matter. I mean, a lot of people are gonna see where you are anyways, based off the sound of the bullets and the death. So take it for what you will, but let's see how it handles by itself. And keep in mind, I'm not trying to control the recoil in any way, shape or form while I'm doing these tests. As you can see, this thing is a recoil beast. For me, this would be absolutely necessary if you're gonna really start trying to pick off medium range targets with this gun, as that this recoil and stabilization control is definitely gonna help you for those mid-range gunfights. Okay, last but not least, we have the one that's the best of both worlds with the monolithic suppressor, the Archangel barrel, the Ranger foregrip, the 50 mag, and the laser. Now, I like putting the laser on this one because if you do get up in a gunfight up close, you won't have to ADS and you can just hip fire as the Grail has one of the best hip fires in its class. Now, the ADS speed is going to be noticeably slower, and that's another reason you want to put the laser on. But this way, you can go medium range and have absolutely zero recoil, or go up close and still be able to spray down targets up close and personal. Oh, yeah. So that's it for this video, guys. I definitely hope this helped you out, and I hope it helps you win more gunfights in Warzone and maybe in multiplayer in Call of Duty Warzone. Be sure to please leave a like subscribe so you can see more fire content like this and catch us on twitch as we stream every tuesdays thursdays and sometimes fridays all right guys peace